All right, I believe we are live. Uh, sorry for the delayed start. We actually delayed the, the algorithm start starts in two and a half minutes. Uh, I'm here with Scott Wu. How's it going, going? Um, Thanks for coming back again. Absolutely. Um, yeah. We want to see more of your art. Um, and you're going to try to explain this to me on how to become an algorithm competitor. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. We'll see if there's, uh, we'll see if there's the same, like if there's more 2D grids, then that's going to be a little bit tricky to go. But yeah. yeah. Um, so we're, we're about to kick off the TCO algorithm finals, top eight contestants. The winner gets $10,000. Um, we're going to be watching right here again, starting in two minutes. Uh, and we'll be following along with the problems as well. So we'll share a link to the problems as soon as this link, uh, as soon as the contest starts up, and so you guys will be able to. Focus so we have uh, we have the lead or the, the competitors Finalist. here. Yeah. Um, in this lovely little design that they're looking at. Um, so if you want to go through and talk about who's in there and. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So a uh, really strong pool here. A um, couple interesting upsets. One big one is uh, from semifinal one, Yegor, who's actually a previous champion. Yeah, um, is out. Good. We might have him later today actually here uh, in the booth just doing commentary with us too. Awesome. Um, but really, really strong contestants. I would say the, you know, the two kind of perennial favorites are Taurus and Petter. Yeah. Um, always some of the top contestants, but I think all eight of these guys could, could easily take the whole thing. Yeah, so we'll see if any, uh, what will happen in finals. Anything can happen, so it'll be interesting. So yeah, definitely. Cares. Um, cool. So I guess the round is starting in around a minute. Yeah. Um, we can, I guess, what should, what should we look at now? No, no, no. Well, so let me give you a little anecdote first. You know, where our table is, they're actually right behind us over oh, yeah. here. Right there. And we had a little problem with our lights. That's how serious the competition yeah. is. <laughs> they didn't want the light in their eyes, so we had to move people around. That's actually a little bit of why we were delayed, but... Yeah, um, moving back and forth. Yeah, that's you can pretty see serious. A bit yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it means a lot to these guys, obviously, yeah. not just the money, um, but also just Top Coder is, is one of the you know, big programming contest and it's one of the events of the year yeah. for our community. Yeah. Uh, and being the champion, you know, we all know last year's champion at CGYH. Uh, we all know the, you know, the previous years and that's something that we talk about a lot. So, <laughs> you know, I think all of these guys really, really want this win here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, so anything else? Soon. Anything else? Yeah, we're going to start. We're going to hear yeah, Nick's lovely voice in 10 right seconds. Right around 10 seconds, yeah. Yep. So what's it feel like to get eliminated? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I guess you oh, guys yeah, don't yeah. know. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. I mean, um, we, we didn't make it to this round. So. <laughs> <laughs> Only good enough for commentary. Is oh, nice, 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 nice. Yeah, uh, we got to talk to, to Yegor yesterday, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, I think he was uh, he was handling it really well, and he was really kind of fine with it too. Um, it's it's an interesting community, I would say for sure, because you know it's very tight knit at the top level, right? We all right. know each other, right. and so. Um, I think even though there's there's this really really strong rivalry between all of us, there's it's it, it doesn't kind of devolve into to anything negative. Okay, and that's yeah, I'm really that's good. That. Yeah, uh, so I put the right. URL up there because they started. Okay, yeah. all right. These are the this is linked to the palm statement at the bottom of the screen. We can also uh, yeah, open up the, the leaderboard scoreboard. just to see who opened what problem. Sure. Um, and for those that don't know, we have the, the URL under the video because we can't paste it into Twitch. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so follow the link, you get to see all the problems that we have. I think we have, hold on, let me find it somewhere. Four up. Four up. Four up. Movement right now. Um, yeah, just it kind will of take some time before we get any submissions. I think um, yeah. it'll be interesting to see if we see any 240 plus submissions from the 250. Um, it is possible to solve pretty fast, but it does require making a lot of fast observations. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. So, so let's. Uh, you want to talk through the 250? Just yeah. So we can just dive right into the 250. So um, in this problem, you're given a tree, um, and it's rooted. So this is node zero. These are other nodes. And each node has a weight. So this could have like weight three, like four, seven, one, and two, right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is 
you want every single node to be balanced. So a balanced node is one where all of its child subtrees have exactly the same weight. So for example, this node is balanced. The same, the same total weight? Yeah, the same total weight. Okay. So for example, um, or let me erase these numbers here. Okay. <laughs> this eraser is too big. Um, okay. Okay, so. Sure. So right now um, that bottom uh, bottom left tree is not yeah, balanced because there's a one and this two. This node is not balanced, right? Because the one and two are different. So one way we can make it balanced is we can change the weights of the nodes. So changing the weight of the node is equal to the cost of uh, like the absolute value between the old value and the th uh, new value. So for example, if we change these nodes to like 1.5 and 1.5, um, this total like this node is now good, right? It has total weight, or like both yeah. uh, child uh, subtrees are weight 1.5. And the top node is still good. And then this top node is also still good um, here, because uh, like the total weight below here is uh, 7, right? And this is 7, so like this is good, right? Uh, so what I want to do is I want to find like the minimum cost needed to balance this tree. Mm -hmm. um, given I can change the weights. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. and so, so it's uh, not necessarily integer numbers that you can add and yeah. subtract by. You can change to any real number, and um, you do need to change any. Let me interrupt there, because there yeah. is a question, because um, of our layout here. Um, the screen that you're looking at in the top right corner is aid. We don't have the labels on, on the people, so right. when we switch around, we'll have to, to make clear, because people are asking. Okay. So, oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, I didn't sure. mean to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, sure. that was <laughs> a good point. Um, yeah, so, so we're gonna have the whiteboard here. Uh, we're also gonna have the scoreboard up. And now you guys, I think, can see all the, kind of who's open what problem, and then we'll also be flipping through the contestants' screens, kind of getting a sense of what they're working on, what they're typing out right now. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that comes to mind for me on this problem, Lewin, is, um, I guess I'm actually just surprised that we have to use uh, non-integer numbers. Like, it's, uh, it sounds like the kind of problem that we could do, but I realize that if you add one here, then the, the top, um, like if you add one to the bottom node, then the top tree becomes unbalanced. Yeah, so right. you have to move. Uh, so like, you do need to add non-integer weights, and this is like one sample that shows that you actually do. Um, like, you have to change this one to 1.5. I don't think there's another way to do it at right. a smaller cost without doing it that way. And do you, uh, do you need to output the solution as well, or do you uh, no. just... No, you just need to output the minimum cost solution. So in this case, the minimum cost solution is 1, right? It's, it's like 1.5 uh -huh. minus 1 plus yeah. 1.5 minus you, You're two. moving this one by 0.5 and this one by 0.5. Yeah, yeah. so this um, is one. Okay, so then the next question that I would ask is, uh, is it possible that maybe the answer is also not an integer? Uh, yes, um, this is actually true in general. So like the answer can be non-integer. Okay. Um, it is harder to construct a case that looks like that, but um, yeah, I think in general the answer does not need to be an integer. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and then so what I'm thinking is um, for each tree, you know, we have uh, we basically have all the chain of equalities for its uh, children subtrees. Right. So right now there's like you know there's there's numbers on the tree right now, but all that boils down to right now. This node is, you know, minus two. This node is plus one. Whatever, whatever. So you're um, saying like these and just two kind nodes of reducing, are equal. reducing okay. the state. Yeah. And like these that. two nodes. So like, if I label this like one, two, three, four, five. Right. So I I kind of have all the you know pairs so of equalities like, that I know have to be true, and I also know what their current state is, as in like how far off they are right now. So you're saying something like this, I guess, and then um. And then you know how different they are, or like you want to enforce. Oh, I was I was gonna go even further than that. So um, okay, just uh, so let's just say like S two or yeah. S S I is the uh, total subtree sum. Mm -hmm. Of I, and then what I have is um, so S two minus S three, S four minus S five. So zero. this this is zero, and then this right now, just because it's uh, this is two and one at the end, original, this is one, right? right? So, so you have this list of equalities, and you want them all to be zero. Uh, and then I was thinking, like, you look at each node of the tree, and you figure out what nodes it changes. And so maybe, for example, just like node five is going to be plus one here and minus one here, whereas node four is going to be. Oh, I see. So it affects some set of equations, but... Yeah, it's going to um, be like plus one and plus one. Okay. And things like that. So you have so all these, like, linear combinations. That's... that's yeah. yeah, so it affects basically, like, all the 
uh, nodes on its, uh, or basically every node up on its path. Uh, and it might be like adjacent, plus or minus, depending on which equation it shows up in. Yeah. So, right. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if this approach will lead anywhere. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I mean yeah, it is, cool, it is cool. good observations. So, sure. this is a good start. So, there's actually one observation that I think you need to make before you can like really make any serious progress on this problem. And that's you only ever need to change the values of the leaps. So, for example, let's imagine I have a node. And I want to do like plus x to this node. Only... I can instead. Oh, yeah, instead you just do, split it out into all that. x over 4. Yeah. Plus x over 4. And, and if, if not that child, then all the leaves that, that go for it. Yeah. And I can always keep pushing this down all the yeah. way down to the leaves. And this has at most the same cost. Like, it could actually be better because, like, I might move something, like, in the other way. Right. So this is, like, the main observation I need to make. I can just push all changes down to leaves. Mm -hmm. So I only ever need to change the leaves. So that does simplify the problem by quite a bit. Okay, yeah, that's an interesting start point because now what I'm thinking is, for example, think about the deepest leaf um, and its change with respect to someone else. Uh, and again, only those two are the, like, those are the only two variables that could possibly affect that, uh, that differential, basically. Like, if, you know, what we had earlier, like, if this is two and this is one, yeah. then there just has to be some number in between where. Yeah, where, where that matches up. Yeah, where they do match up. So, um, so actually, yeah, you do have to, like, once you make this observation that you only need to make changes that leaves, you actually get a really simple, greedy solution if you fix the final weight of the tree, right? So let's say, the like... final weight of the tree. Right. So let's just say I want the final weight of this tree to be, like, two, right? Yeah, and so, so you know that the, the, the top node isn't some, changing. So each node inside has, like, t minus w divided by right, however. By three, yeah. right. So yeah. like instead I can just push this down. And I can keep pushing these like final sub like weights that I want down to the bottom of the tree. Right. Okay. Okay. So Oh I see. So all of these things are gonna be equations in terms of T. Yeah, so actually they're all linear equations. They're all linear, yeah. Yeah, so they're all linear equations in T. So actually okay. we can write for each node, this is the original like one T plus zero, right? And then we like push this down, um, so this could be like the vi. So this is like, uh, in general, we have like a t minus b i for yeah. each node, and yeah. we can just push these. And then at the very end, bottom. for each leaf, you get this absolute value. You want to add up all the absolute values, and then that gives you an equation that you want the minimum of. Right. So we want to minimize the sum a i minus times t minus b i. Or plus bi minus wi. Uh -huh. uh, My over... intuition there is that one of those equations, like at equality, one of those equations is equal to zero, but I'm not 100% sure. Does that sound true? Yeah, so this is uh, kind of similar to like a medium problem. So, like, imagine we have a bunch of lines, and like, if we just graph this function, it'll look something like this, right? And then we have a bunch of lines that look. A bunch of absolute value lines, yeah. yeah. And, they can and then they have different slopes, right? So right. We want to find like a point here that minimizes the sums of the points along that line. Right? Yep, but that combined graph is also it has a similar shape where it's a big B. Yeah, so if you add these are all like convex functions. So if you add them all up, they'll look something like uh, I don't know, like this. And then we can find like the smallest value from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just a quick, uh, just looking at AC Rush's screen, uh, it looks like he's already getting into it and coding. Yeah, um, so it looks like he is coding something similar, so maybe he has a similar AI and BI, so maybe we can switch out to his what screen. Would you, uh, what would you guess is the first time of submission for, for this problem? Like, were you expecting, you know, a pretty, um, a pretty quick solve, or...? I was expecting around, like, maybe 2.20ish, so maybe around, like, um, 20 minutes in, 15 to 20 minutes in. Okay. So it looks yeah. like we're almost so, so we're way. yeah, we're right about to hit that point with two twenty. Yeah. Um, and so we'll see if, if the submissions start pouring in. Yeah, so it looks like he's doing uh, yeah, like a DFS that takes returns like a, returns two numbers. And, and that's kinda that's similar the, to like the, the linear a, equations. AI and BI. Yeah, yeah, so I think like he's probably on the right track and we might see a solution from him soon. Uh -huh. People are just asking about the problem statement. We'll get back oh, gotcha. to the page with the URL in a <laughs> second. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at Taurus, actually, and see what he's up to. Yeah. I'm not as good at this as Nick is. No, all good, all good. <laughs> um, and Taurus is uh, kind of in a similar boat, I think, coding 
Yeah. Um, um, so I'm not too sure. There's an L and an R. R. So like, one thing I guess, guess like, yeah, I'm not too sure if this is on the right track right now. Interesting. Yeah, L, yeah. I, and R, I. So is the tree binary? Is it guaranteed? To... Uh, no, the tree can't have different number of children okay. uh, for each node. Okay, so this is not just like some left-right thing, presumably. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what LI and RI mean. So you might be getting wrong answer on the samples, so you might be trying to debug some of that right now. Uh -huh. um, the samples are relatively strong in this problem, so I don't expect anybody to fail on system tests, at least for this one. Or okay, interesting. So, so anybody who does put up a submission, we're going to expect them to, to probably yeah. kind of to hold up all the way through. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Okay, okay. But yeah, yeah, just keep going with what you're saying. So you have convex um, functions. Yeah, um, and you're, you're adding a lot of them together, right? Uh, I'm sorry, right. I'm getting back to the four up. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so there are a few ways you can solve this. One is like, uh, yes, it's true that like I only actually need to try values that hit zero at one of these points. So like I only need to try n different values. Yeah. Um, and that's one valid solution. The other one is I can also do like a ternary search, right? Like if I have a sum of convex functions, it's also convex, so I can do like ternary search. Mm -hmm. um, so both of these work. Um, in this case, n is only up to like 200, 250, I think. So like this is like so. So any of these will, is, is totally yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Interesting. You can actually also solve this in linear time. Um, it's kind of similar to like you want to find. It's you. The point. You get the convex hole of the, the slopes or something like that. Yeah. Right. And you want to find the point where it changes from like non-positive to non-negative slope, and then that's like the optimal point because like uh, it can't. Or like it can only like decrease or like. Oh, I see. Like yeah, I mean you can also just it. find each of the roots, uh, or not the roots. Yeah, like the points where one of the the functions is zero, and then kind of like sweep along that right? yeah, and right. update the slope. So yeah. we have we have questions in the chat um, yeah. about AC Rush's screen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, they're agreeing with you. Uh, Matthew nine nine bb nine nine b says, yeah, I think for each node you need a kind of vector. Right. So but double then it, and then pair double. Yeah. Double. Yeah. So this is a. Uh, Again, this is just a little like hacky way to, to have three doubles is to make pairs of pairs. Uh, yeah. But um, so it's three doubles. So actually, he might be returning some sort of like function based on the node. Um, I'm not too sure. Maybe it isn't quite right then. Um, well, we'll see if he uh, does submit soon. I'm not too sure if it's on the right track then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually hard to see. I, I need to. What do you need? Oh, this I, one? I need to like just read it more closely. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Oh, so he's actually sorting the. So it seems like he's sorting some sort of like points together, and then like taking like the median. Yeah, I think this one actually might be similar to like tourist approach. So okay, uh, it might not be on the right track. <laughs> do you we'll think see. so? Are there other solutions other than the one that you just presented, um, or do most of the solutions go on this route? I think most solutions do need to make the observation that you only need to change value of that resource, and then. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. I guess like it is, so like I think the other approach that could be tempting is like you try to make a function that says like what's the minimum cost, uh, like min cost. Yeah, and then you pass that function up and you just uh, keep merging. The, yeah. Uh, -huh. uh But the thing is like this function is actually not that nice because like as we can see, at, like this is actually what we derived above here is like the function at the root. And it has like fractional slopes. It has uh, slopes that could be like any arbitrary real number. Uh, yeah. So it's not very nice to deal with, and I think it's very hard to. It could be very hard to make this work. It seems like they're only returning three numbers, so that's probably not enough information to encode what the function looks like in general. I see. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So let's uh, let's scroll through and take a look. Matthew's yeah. helping you debug over here, by the way. He's giving you oh. suggestions, okay. <laughs> um, like n values. Oh, I guess you only need two. So. Right. Yeah. So so right. So if you if you go top down and pass those downwards, then you should only need two values at any point in time, right, which yeah. is the AI and the BI, like the the linear and the the constant term. Yeah. Right? But if you go bottom up, then maybe it is a bit harder. So uh, yeah. yeah. I I don't know. Maybe they'll realize that it isn't <laughs> the right approach soon. But we can cool. switch over. Yeah. To so let, let's so the, uh, we've been asked to show uh, Peter's screen. Yeah. Let's take it's, a look. Yeah. It's up here now. Uh huh. Um, Peter also in uh, in chugging with code. Yeah. Um, so he's trying to there. do like a bottom-up approach. It looks like too. So the description is probably it's just some, some kind arbitrary. of struct that has some some stuff inside. Yeah. yeah. Like, so instead of yes. Oh, that's okay. his own. If that's his own class describing. Yeah. Which yeah. yeah. He has okay. made his own class. Okay. Interesting. Um, how about uh, eight? Let's see what eight is up to. Yeah.
Okay, and oh, Adrian. Like just starting. Yeah, just getting started with the code. Uh, a lot of this is just his typical template. Um, um, but he's doing DFS, I think. Um, yeah, it's just DFS. Right. So, so I guess I think this is interesting because it seems like a lot of the competitors are trying to do something bottom up. Yeah. Where they're building, um, yeah, building a, t a root node from each of its children's subtrees. Uh, whereas, as you're saying, it's kind of it's better to to, to take it top, top down. down and then handle everything separately. I think yeah. it's interesting because um, I feel like most of these tree problems actually usually, Do you know, top bottom down. up is bottom uh, up is, is is the way you think about things. Yeah. So I think like bottom up is actually very hard to get work. So actually, when I first so this is the problem I wrote for this finals, mm -hmm. and when I first proposed it, I also thought you could do it bottom up. So I got a bit confused. So maybe like it looks kind of similar to what I was initially trying. Uh -huh. But I think it's very hard to make it work because, like, again, the some of the slopes the slopes can be fractional, so it's just like so hard to deal with this correctly. Um, you need to do it top down in order to like get something reasonable, like without that many cases. I see. Yeah, and so you think a lot of them are kind of getting tripped up by the same. Yeah. So they might just be coding this bottom up approach, but then they'll realize soon that like it actually won't work out, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe they'll like switch out to the easier approach. Right. Afterwards. Yeah. So let's take a look at uh, someone else. Like Kate, Kate Sun. Yeah, we're gonna head yeah. over to Kate Sun. Um, okay, Sun is. Yeah, so it looks like he's keeping track of slopes also. So, again, another bottom up approach. So, uh -huh. yeah. Hmm. Okay, and the, the things that you provided an input is a what is that the parent vector and then the yeah, weight. Yeah, you're given basically one. like the edge of the tree, edges of the tree, and then the weight. Of the tree. Uh huh. So. Okay, so now that I'm thinking about this, actually, if you want to do top down, just like, you know, kind of talking about clean code from the input that you have, I think you can just loop through the array yeah. and just maintain. Uh, yeah, so we provide the parent pointer so that, like, every node points to a label or earlier, yeah. or earlier label. Yeah. So you can just, like, do a for loop in one direction and then it's pretty clean from there. Uh huh. Yeah. Right, I see. Yeah, so you just, you just create the AI and BI, and your thing only depends on your parents' thing. Right, yeah. Um, Right. You um, need to know how many children you have. Yeah, you do uh, need to keep track of like yeah. degree, but like the degree is easy to keep uh, count. I see. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Yes. cool. So maybe this problem will take a lot longer. Than yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> looking so. to be a harder 250. I know um, the the past two semifinals, uh, most if not all the contestants who tried the 250 were able to get a solution going. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I think some of the contestants were were complaining <laughs> to us after the round that they were too easy. So oh, I want to so say this like is a great problem. Submitted. Good job. You got a compliment. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, cool. It looks like Tourist actually submitted. Maybe you can see what he's coming in. It's okay, okay, so you're up here. 187 yeah. from Tourist. Should we switch awesome. over to his yeah, screen? Yeah, yeah. Let's just take a look at what he's doing. We can catch him maybe testing it a little bit more. Yeah, and so one of the things that we were looking for yesterday is when they finish a problem, do they move on immediately? Do they run more tests? Do they write a generator? Yeah. Um, that tells you a lot, I think, about how, how confident they are in their solution and also kind of. Uh, yeah, just how cautious they want to play it overall. Right, right, yeah. So it looks like he's still testing it a bit on some like small examples and also the samples. Um, I think the sample is relatively random, so he could, I think it does give him confidence that it works, so maybe he's just being a right. little bit extra careful. Right, so, um, so the sample is random, but he might actually not know that, right? Yeah, he doesn't know. Maybe he's looking for any specific things, but mm -hmm. we'll see. <laughs> cool. So, so I'm not an algorithm guy, but you said something about writing a generator. So what, what, how does that work? Like, what would you use that for? So you would build your own larger test set to run against? Uh, yeah, so in some cases where it's easy to generate the answer by a brute force or something, then you could do it. I think for this problem especially, it's hard to make sure your answer is optimal because like you can, there's like too many states to look at mm. because since we can modify the weights to any real number, like there's not a discrete number of states. You can okay. like do okay. anything. So like, they yeah, have that's, to... that's interesting, actually. So, like, how would you, you know, if you wanted to test this problem, how would you, how would you, <laughs> how would you test it? Um, so... Sometimes, I mean, if, it's, if there's, like, a really easy n-squared and it's about optimizing it to linear, you know, often you can just write that n-squared out, have a generator, and just, you know, run yourself on 100 cases yeah. and make sure those are good. But here, I think you here know, how do you, you do... know what the right answer is? It's hard to verify, like, programmatically, I think. You can't really generate cases and then become more confident in it. Uh -huh. I think it really does come down to, like, proving it on paper and just, like, convincing yourself, like, this is optimal and, like, you can't get a better solution. Like, sure. um, I don't know if, like, looking through code and generating more examples will necessarily work for this problem as well. Sure. So, yeah, so maybe there's not that much to do there other yeah. than, you know, Just making sure all your logic is correct. Potentially and, like, maybe, like, doing a really simple, like, 
you know, a, a node where every everyone has the same parrot right, or yeah. something like that. So just kind of sanity check. When, um, there's a question here. I was absent for a moment, but I'm not getting how the answer can not be an integer. Can you can you touch on that again? A small just, test. Uh, is that a, is that a quick answer? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll need to think about it a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm still kind of curious about that too, because yeah, I mean, in my mind. Uh, so basically, like, let, we, if we write down these functions, then like maybe you can kind of look right. So like. Oh, um, let, Go ahead, finish, I'm no, think about it. Oh, you're going to think about it? Okay, sure. So, yeah, so we're actually going to bring in Mike, uh, who is uh, one of the writers. Um, and here for, for TCO 2018, we're going to kind of get a sense of what he's thinking. Okay, cool. Did, Hello. You, did you test this problem? Which one? Uh, uh, we're easy, on the balancing trees. Balancing trees. Uh, I didn't actually get to test it. I tested the hard one. The hard one. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I think so it's a really nice problem. Apparently, Kevin just opened it. Oh, yeah, Kevin, Kevin just opened, opened the hard. So that's interesting because we saw him code it, right? So I, I mean, usually you, you switch to another problem when you uh, when you're giving up on the one that you did. But maybe Kevin had an idea and then realized it wasn't going to pan out. But yeah, so let's just let's take a look at the hard, Charlie. Uh, maybe Eric Doe would be the one to look at. He's been op he's been on the hard since the start. Yeah, he's been writing for a while already, uh. and I kind of feel that he's had the right idea. Okay. But there are a few important details that he still needs to figure out. Okay, so yeah, so talk us through the hard problem, just kind of the, the general idea. Do you want to try it also? Um, um, should we switch Yeah, to we'll switch the, back. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if, did you say who, who we added? Oh yeah, this is oh. Mike. He did. Okay, uh, okay. And, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, yeah. uh, I'm, no, no, I'm totally, totally octopus fine. on over here. Uh, <laughs> so, I, so I did some problem writing for uh, the TCO qualification rounds, but not for this one. I actually submitted one problem, but later when preparing it, I realized that it's a bit too difficult. Uh, <laughs> too hard for TCO. Yeah, I mean, it was more difficult than rearranging boxes that no one solved. Right. Okay, so yeah, yeah, it would probably be a waste. Okay. I think we're still going to use it somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but not at TCO. Okay, okay great. Cool. Um, so, so, yeah, the, the hard problem is called Worms, I believe. Yeah, it was uh, created by Mishoff. Uh -huh. And in this problem, uh, you are given a grid. And on th uh, this grid, uh, you have uh, worms. And worms have uh, are labeled by letters. So, for instance, you have a situation like this, and then you have question marks in the rest of the grid. And um, the rule for the worms is that the worm can only move up or to the right. Uh -huh. um, so, let me make it a bit more complicated. So uh, this worm with letter A is moving on to the right, this worm with letter C is moving to the right and uh, up. And it can, can it alternate it can, up, right? And it exactly. Can, like, the ar okay. arbitrary shape, right. Yes. And um, you're given this grid uh, that has at most 26 worms. And right. uh, your goal is to uh, tell us how many different boards uh, can there be that uh, start with this uh, this configuration. And so are you guaranteed that there are no more worms past the... Or you can use more than 26. Uh, you right? can use more than 26. Oh, so wow. you, can, <laughs> you can introduce uh, any number of worms that you actually need. Okay, okay. and how so big like, is the, the board? Uh, the input is, I think, 50, 50. times 50. Yeah. Uh -huh. And also, like, worms can be just like one square, and that's fine. So like, if this is... Like, exactly. Worm, so so you, you this doesn't have to be D. This can be anything else. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And the, the input that you're given is this, this partial grid? Exactly. Um, yeah, and the partial grid is given in this form. Or yeah, like it is form. given in this form. Uh, so if you read the cells from uh, top to bottom, left to right, uh, you will some, some prefix of these good. cells is going to be filled and the rest will be empty. Okay, I see. So the first thing that comes to mind when I think of that is, is just kind of the like the typical row by row state DP. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, obviously, n equals 50 is going to be a little tough to work with that. Yeah, but you can't afford any exponential solution. On right. That. So, so the idea is like, I see. Interesting. So, so obviously, only the, you know, assuming the the prefix is correct or like valid. It's always correct. That, that's that guaranteed. Yeah. Only the the very top row of things yeah. uh, that is given to you matters, right? Everything below it is is not important. Yeah, the uh, top row and the prefix. The is that row. true? It's the opposite. Sorry, sorry, the, 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 the bottom, bottom row. Bottom yeah. most and perhaps the one before that. Yeah, the, if, like, 
if it's not filled completely. The end ones at the, the very bottom of each of the yes. columns. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. I see. Um, and so then from that point, it's nothing exponential, huh? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the exponential. Nothing, yeah, <laughs> not even a meet in the middle? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> I think that would be too slow for this uh -huh. one. Right, because so uh, yeah, I mean, if you were to ask, you know, for example, an empty grid, just to start simpler, yeah, so empty like, grid on an h by w, um, maybe there's some kind of formula for that, or, or yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure myself. Um, there is, yeah, you can yeah. solve it in uh, h plus w. Okay, and this also goes for this case, almost up to a few little details. I see. Right. Yeah. Right. So 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 it's kind of like the 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 bottom row here. That you have, it tells you what locations you can, I'll call it, continue uh, a previous can work. still go up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so forget about the like the, the different heights. Just pretend it's all the same height for now. Okay, let's just say one row is completely. Filled. Yeah, it's just like a top okay. row completely mm -hmm. filled and nothing okay. else. Yeah. Then it's like you have the long strings, uh, or maybe single characters or whatever. But you have the strings of of, of each existing worm. Uh, basically, each worm can be extended at its leftmost point right. only. Yeah. And none of the other places. Also, yeah, leftmost twist. Yeah. Um, and so, right. And so then the, the bottom, essentially the bottom grid is the, the same as a typical standard problem, except you have to add in this possibility. It has a weird shape, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, we're still looking at our reach down screen. Do you want to? Yeah, somebody let's, else we should uh, look at it. Let's oh, take a look Peter at just Peter, actually. So, so Peter maybe, came in on the 250. He still hasn't opened another problem, so maybe we can check that out. Um, yeah, so so far, so Tourist got started on the 500. Kevin ditched the 250, got started on the 1000. Other than that, everyone only with the one problem open. Um, let's see what's going on here. I'm a bit disappointed by Tourist's decision to open the 500. Do you think because you we've all heard Erito saying that uh, he's gonna start with hard, yeah. and uh, yeah, if sure. after 20 minutes he has no idea, he's gonna switch. And Tourist took about 20 minutes to solve 250, and yeah. he saw that uh, Erito is still on the 1000, so that means that it's approachable. So Erito is, is still, still working hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so Tourist might have been uh, seeing that, yeah, 1000 is totally solvable, so I should switch to it. Right. Oh, okay. That's interesting that Erecto also decided to tell everyone that. Yeah. Like, that's, maybe that's he feels like lying about it. So yeah. Just, like, keeping it open just to keep people optimistic. But he started helpful. writing code about 10 minutes in. Oh, so uh -huh. yeah, maybe you can switch to his screen and see. Then, if then he stopped for Erecto. a while. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I mean, so I guess another sign, just uh, you know, from looking at the scoreboard, Umnik has the 500 open uh, and has it open, has had an open all contest. So yeah, maybe we can switch to Umnik really quickly also. Yeah, so around half an hour there for him. Um, same story there, if, if he had no idea what to do, you would kind of expect that he, he had moved on. It looks like he's writing code. Um, yeah. But yeah, shall we, shall we talk about the 500? Yes, uh, or should we, sure. yeah, we can talk about what the 500 is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you clear this? Uh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so in 500 you're given a set of points in a two-dimensional plane. And you want to find uh, an Euclidean spanning tree. Uh, and the thing that you're minimizing is the distance between, uh, the, the maximum distance between pair of points. And you are only allowed to go uh, through the edges that you select with the tree. Okay. So, so in this particular case, I, I think that uh, the optimal solution is, 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 is just to the star. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. right. So maximum diameter of a spanning tree, spanning tree in Euclidean space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how, how big is M there? N is up to 200, I think. 250? Or 250, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So what would be a case where it's not the best idea to just create a star? Uh, so one of the samples does have that. Uh, I don't yep. remember what it looks like, but it looks something like this. Uh, so here in this case, it's optimal to do something like this. Oh, and having the star actually makes it... So if you have a star, then like maybe these are like too big, right? Or like these are, this is going to be too big, right? So mm. these uh -huh. can't be the center points. Okay. All right, second idea. When would it not be the uh, the minimum spanning tree, the MST? Well, actually might the Euclidean minimum spanning tree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's see. Maybe... In this case, 
Yeah, let's see. This this is the minimum spending tree. Right, but maybe we can do something like this. Uh, so okay. <laughs> or maybe sorry. just connect one of them to there and uh, still have di edge diameter of three. Yeah, you right. can connect here. And actually, like that's already yeah. That's and that's better. that's better. Yeah. Or it's not yeah, worse. Yeah, this is not worse. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So okay. there are always a solution of edge diameter two or three. That is optimal. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is there is there an obvious reason that's the case? Uh, not obvious, I guess. But yes, there is a reason. It's it's it's, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a bit of casework, but basically this this picture above gives it away. If you have a path of length four, you can always connect one of the endpoints uh, to a vertex. Uh, yeah. So if you have a path of length four, then like. You can connect one of these here. Either the outside left or the outside right. Yeah, yes. you can connect one of these two, and it won't make it worse. Why is that? Um, oh, so I like, see. Let's I see, just I say see. one of these is shorter. You just right. take the yeah the. No, so, I, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So let's just say this is shorter than this one. So if we connect it here instead. Yeah. Then the only side. path that you're adding is the one that kind of loops in and out. Yeah. And that is the, definitely shorter than this one. The one yeah. on the right. Yeah, uh, and that's obviously shorter. Right. Okay. okay. I see. So graphs that have diameter at most three, what do those? What kind of shape do those have? I, is that is that not just two star points and then yeah, things? Exactly, yeah, exactly. It's, it's yeah, two so star it's like, connected by by an edge. Like right. so, oh wow! So you can just uh, brute force all possible uh, edges that are in the middle, and all possible uh, star vertices, and you're done. You take the minimum. So. Once I have, let's say I'm fixing this edge, and I want to know who should I assign each um, each node to. Yeah. Basically. And how do I how do I approach that one? Um, so one, you for every other point, it creates two distances like d1, d2, right? Yeah. And then um, you have like these pairs of like d1, d2, or d1i, right? And then like uh -huh. and so on, right? So uh, I just want to. Basically, you can imagine like once you fix the two points, I'm like kind of drawing a circle. Right? Yeah, it's it's either two guys in the same component then, where you just add, or in different components where you add and then also add yeah. the edge between them. Hmm. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So there, there's a lot of points in the middle where you know maybe it makes sense to put them all together in a component or something like that so that they don't uh, they don't have to add the edge in the middle or something. Like that, right. So how do you, how do you make these? Uh, May, may I interrupt? Yeah, because please. there's a great comment here I want you to talk about. Uh, Matthew says he hopes that Taurus didn't misread the problem. Um, I don't know if that's something that you can pull from this by just looking, uh -huh. but um, can you comment on that? Or? Oh, um, what are you saying? Uh, no, it looks like he's doing, he's like fixing two points and then um, sorting them. Yeah, that looks like the right approach. Okay, I'm so not sure. in the middle he has some. Uh, He's doing like Floyd Warshall. Yeah, he's doing Floyd Warshall and then. Which isn't really necessary because already satisfies the triangle link quality, but I guess like, why not, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, that seems strange. Um, oh, okay, so the, the 4 and A, 4 and B, he's looping all possible pairs Anchors, of points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and potentially those could be the same pair. And I think you can kind of just deal with that case as if they were two different vertices located at the same place and you, you stay alive there. Yeah, I mean, Floyd Weichel is not that expensive to write to you, so like, yeah. It's actually well, what, like is it, what does he need it for? It doesn't, doesn't hey, I don't think anything. it changes. I don't think it changes the graph at <laughs> yeah, all. Yeah, I, I don't know why he added it. Maybe he just like did it just for fun, or like he just wanted to type it out. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, as we're talking, actually, AC Rush with another submission on the 250. So we've seen th three 250 nows. That's yeah. um, about only, time. Yeah, the <laughs> only problem that's been solved, I think, uh, so definitely a harder 250 than uh, in previous runs. Yeah, it looks like Coder indeed. and both AC Rush opened the 1000 afterwards. So, um, uh -huh. yeah, definitely. So maybe they were, they were listening to the Eric <laughs> uh, strategy there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think as far as problem breakdown goes, it's looking like even if Taurus has a fast 500, um, if anyone gets the 1000 ahead of him, he's going to be in trouble there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at um, a mix screen. See what he's up to. Yeah, you see what's coding. Yeah, Nick the last was coding time this problem the 500, right? Mm -hmm. and maybe yeah. he hasn't made as much progress. It looks around the same. Do you think this is uh, the right idea going here? Um, Just from what you guys can see. If we can see a double loop, then maybe it's uh, on the right track. 
uh -huh. it's hard to tell from here. Maybe you, this whole thing is fat and I, I can't. I'm not too sure. Um, well, he first has to brute force all possible stars. Yeah, he brute forces all stars, so maybe he's just saying that right now. I don't know why mm -hmm. he's like adding an edge, or like, add edge looks kind of like foil for some reason. And I don't think oh, I see. he's trying to do some sort of matching problem, right? Because I think uh, like, once you have these pairs, you can maybe like fix the max distance and then try to do a matching problem. But I don't think you need to do matching since like, it is on a 2D, like it's all Euclidean distance. Yeah, so, so like, can, can, you, can you guys talk about that? How do you solve oh, that? Okay. The, the, Problem with two points. So basically, we can show that once, uh, or we can switch back to the iPad. Um, also, Every, um, Let's switch Nick, back to uh, Nick was just commenting uh, behind us. Everybody is stacked, looking at Taurus' screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, he actually submitted to 500. Wow, so. Taurus very quick. 427. Yeah. yeah, this is a really good time. In fact, faster than any of the 250s. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> the 250s so. giving people more trouble. Uh, than how much time is between 500 and 427, approximately? That's a good question. I think. I want to say 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. Does that sound no, right? I think that he opened it at about one hour uh, mark. So 15 so minutes. So 15 minutes. Or 14. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, 10 to 15. Yeah, that's right. that's crazy for the the medium. <laughs> yeah, <so laughs> it's um, still uh, nothing compared to his performance on uh, yeah, hard yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the hard yesterday was. <laughs> that was exciting too. So we were watching people spending the entire contest on hard, right? <laughs> and then they got you know like 400 out of a thousand. Kennedy opens it in the last you know 20 minutes or something, and then yeah. still gets it in and gets like 800 <laughs> points and yeah, completely exactly. dominated that contest. Um, so yeah, it looks like we opened the medium worked out. So maybe this might encourage more people to open the medium. Yeah. But given that Umnik has been working on it for almost the whole contest now, it is still right. definitely a tricky problem. So from a contestant's view who hasn't seen the problem, all they know is out of the two people who got it, one of them, <laughs> you know, got it quickly. One of them didn't get it. One uh, of them was, was tourist. So maybe it doesn't count tourist, as a. Yeah. Tourist. I mean, it's, it's tourist, so it's not a really good measurement. Yeah, it's right. Not, <laughs> it's actually yeah. Giving yeah. any signal. For and the important I, uh, question is: Is he correct? Yeah. 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 For sure. So um, there are some tricky cases. I think the samples for this are also relatively strong, so I don't expect to see failing success in here. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest risk is probably a time limit, but um, there are big samples in. Uh, yeah, and I mean, if everything is n cubed, yeah. then yeah, it should be fine, right? Um, interesting. And so, do you, do you guys think the challenge phase will probably be a little bit slower with this particular round just because of uh, the nature of the problems? Yeah, I think challenge for 250, there might not be that many unless there are some really interesting approaches that the uh -huh. sample, random sample might not catch, at right. least. So, um, yeah, we'll see if there's any activity, but I think there won't be as much. Or, I, sure. I can imagine some challenges happening on uh, on the heart. Yeah, I can imagine challenges because on the heart. there are some cases that are not part of the sample. Yeah, uh -huh. there is one particular tricky case that is not in the sample. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so let's take a look at Erecto um, yeah, and let's see what still he's up to. Working. So at this point, around 40 minutes uh, with just him and the heart. Um, okay, it looks like he's still coding. Um, yeah, and the, the, the lines of code is racking up. It's looking like around 300 uh, lines total already. 300. I, I don't know how oh, much. Based of, on his scroll bar. How much? Yeah, I'm trying, just trying to estimate. <laughs> I, I don't know how much of that is um, is like template, template and how much of that is. I mean, a lot of it is template because like it copies all the test cases over. So oh, I see. we have uh, some eight. submissions. Another submission. Okay, so eight yeah, submitted. so eight on the 250. Um, yeah. So Cordy, I think. Probably the only remaining contestant still looking at the 250. Yeah, I know Kevin Jason. had some code. Um, I'm wondering actually if maybe he ran it on the sample cases and it found out it was wrong. wrong. Yeah, they need to yeah. it. Keep like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so Kevin, I think, also kind of full swing on the 1000. You want to go to Kevin or QWERTY? Let's maybe take a look at uh, Kevin. Kevin, yeah. It's, it's unexpected because before the round, I, except for the obvious guess, yeah. I kind of thought that Kevin might be able to win. Uh -huh. But he and I was not the really only one, apparently. On yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was, there was some discussion on code forces uh, from an unknown user. Uh, I think he's well known, but nobody knows who he is. Well known, but anonymous. How about that? Anonymous. Yeah, it yeah, was his first comment ever, and he, <laughs> uh, and he said he that he endorsed Kevin for, for two He's a big fan. <laughs> yeah, a big fan. <laughs> um, so, Kevin, on his screen, just looking at the samples, I have to imagine he's working things out on paper um, or just thinking in his head. Interesting. So people are talking about maybe Taurus misread the problem. I doubt that he did if he passed yeah, the samples. Yeah, I don't think. Um, yeah, the samples are pretty strong in that, like, 
I think like the most common misread is maybe you think it's just the cost of the spanning tree, like the some of the oh, I see. but like the it's samples, pretty. I'm sure the samples are yeah. definitely like much smaller than like minimum spanning tree cost. So yeah, right. Um, well, I think that can only happen if you have two votes. Yeah, if you have two yeah. votes, it's <laughs> the like, same. The samples will definitely catch you in the center. Oh, I guess three. You no, it should be it should be the same thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Should, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no more than that. <laughs> um, yeah, so maybe we can talk about the solution outline for the heart, uh, just to give a hint on like what the writer pushes. For mm -hmm. the um, heart, yeah, go ahead. So maybe we can scroll back to yeah, so the we sample that we have. To, okay. Yeah. So. Here you go. So. Let us focus on a particle diagonal first. So let's say that we look at uh, the diagonal that contains these cells. Oh, sorry. oh this direction. Like yeah. <laughs> this, these cells. Uh -huh. So what can Amy say about those boundary edges? Along some of these edges, uh, the worm will be the same, yeah. And among uh, so, uh, across some edges, it will it will be different. So here yeah, so it's different, and here it's the, the same. same. Oh yeah. yeah, this this is part of it. And the crucial observation is that it cannot be the same twice in a row, right? Because then it would mean that it goes either down or yeah, to the, it goes in both directions. Left. Yeah. So you can um, look uh, at each diagonal independently and calculate uh, the number of uh, edge configurations that there can be. Oh, I see. The other thing that you need to know is that along the diagonal itself, all the worms, all are, of the worms are different. Yeah. Uh, and so none of the state above matters. Right? Yes. So you're kind of doing That's row nice. by row, but it makes it much easier now you're looking at diagonals, right? Yeah. So you're doing row by, or diagonal by diagonal. So each diagonal is an isolated problem and you multiply them all together. Yeah, so you just use a simple DP that you spend a few minutes to write and you realize that it's just a Fibonacci number. <laughs> right, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's be a binary different. string of length n that doesn't contain two consecutive it's ones. It's either same, different, or different. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> um, okay. But, so now nice, we have huh? to be careful about how to handle the beginning. Yeah, because uh, this solution is only correct for empty for empty grid, yeah. or for a grid that has each row uh, either fully. Uh, so. Uh, so the tricky case is when you have this row ending up with an A, and then you have A's here, and here you have some B. And if you handle each of the diagonals oh, independently, it will not connect A <laughs> to this A. Okay, but if you have if you have four rows only, yeah. then this solution is already correct. Wow. Okay, so, so here it's simple. <laughs> you just connect it yourself. Yeah. You put A's everywhere, and then do the same thing. Right. And then there is a second case, which I believe is part of the samples. Yeah, it is part of the sample. Where you have an A at the end of a row, and here you don't have any A's. And then what can actually happen if you treat the diagonals independently? Right. Is that it could that connect them. It could, could connect them. So you don't want that to happen. So what do you do? You connect them and count those as bad configurations. So what you what oh, you do is you say that clean. this is not B, this is A. Yeah. Calculate how many grids are there that, that satisfy this. You solve that for each letter. I you see. have to make sure that you it's not each letter, it's each different letter. So for instance, <laughs> you cannot connect it to this D, yeah, yeah. but you have to connect it to the the this D. Yeah. That's funny. So there That's are some tricky cases. The and first one is on the samples, so it only depends right. So it only depends on the last character on the partial row that you fit. Exactly. Yeah. And that's it. And if that's it fully filled, then you're already done. Yeah. Wow. And so I'm curious, actually, to hear more about this diagonal trick because I've I've never seen anything like it before. Um, I don't know if there are there other problems that kind of uh, that have that idea. Not that I know of. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think this it, is it's pretty. It's an original idea. Yeah. yeah. How would you? Uh, how would come you guys? Can, yeah. How would you come up with that? How would you get to it? I probably wouldn't have come up with it <laughs> on my own. <laughs> I was just playing with some small cases and I got the right idea. Uh -huh. It took it took me a while. I mean, I spent more than an hour on this problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Perhaps yeah. Eric is gonna be faster. We'll see. <laughs> or a tourist. Tourist. 
might be really fast. He might get another 800 plus points. It could be solved very oh, that's fast. Funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, so if you come in and you know exactly what to do, right? Yeah. Then it, you're just you're just typing. Basically. Yeah, exactly. But um, wow. Okay. Yeah, I like this problem a lot. I think there's um, yeah, I mean, I, I like the, the the whole idea of you know a rectangular grid and breaking it down into a more atomic part where everything is independent from one another. That's that's really cool. I think. Cool. Yeah. Um, Should we switch over to other people's screens? Yeah, yeah, let's take a look. Well, I was asked to switch to Taurus and, and Peter. So, oh, so that's Taurus. We're on Taurus screen right now. And Taurus, is, I assume, is just looking, reading the one. Is that Taurus screen? Yeah, I'm trying to double check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's just reading the problem right now. So. Okay, let's go to uh, Peter. Uh, oh. So he's full swing coding the 1000. Yeah, it looks like he's doing some sort of row by row DP. Uh, maybe it's just a brute force just to verify or something because I don't think I'll run <laughs> fast enough. To do fix me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> leaving that all there. <laughs> cool. Um, another interesting thing we have going on is Aid just opened the 500 after the 250. Um, so, so Taurus and Aid opted to go for the 500 on the 250. Uh, Piotr and AC Rush opted to go for the 1000 instead. Of course, Taurus now. You know, finish the 500, <laughs> so on the 1,000. Yep. Do you guys expect, like, this is a little bit of a loaded question, but do you guys expect anybody to, to get all three of the problems today? We thought it was possible, but you had to be a bit lucky. And so far, Tourist does look like he's on track. Yeah, uh, tourist, tourist is probably the only one who has a chance of doing that. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, maybe AC Rush or Pyrrhus also, if they solve the 1,000 soon. Um, but it's not clear if they will get there in time. Makes sense. Yeah, let's uh, take a look at uh, what AC at, Rush. Oh yeah. yeah we kind of didn't Rush. expect anyone to solve all three. Right. Yeah. Right. So AC Rush is still reading. Uh, okay. I have so to he imagine he doesn't have kind of like he's missing some of the, the observations. Mm. Yeah. To, to start cutting them. I think the first instinct for most competitors is probably just to do the row by row, as you mentioned, Scott. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, it will be hard to see if any of them go for diagonal by diagonal approach. Right. Yeah. Also, my first idea was to go worm by worm. Oh right. Right. Because yeah. each worm, uh, they kind of like have a, there's a some space ordering. above them. Yeah, space. and each worm is kind of a lattice path from the uh, left uh, bottom left corner to the top right, uh -huh. and so you have a consecutive, uh, uh, consistent, some ordering. Con yeah. consistent yeah. ordering, and you have uh, you have more of these paths, and they they intersect, but they never cross. Right. But the problem is that uh, you sometimes may have two worms that are independent, that one of them is in the lower left corner and one of them is in the top right, and there is no way of ordering those, and I figured that it's going to be hard to, to fix. Yeah. And yeah. also, there are so many lattice paths anyway. Yeah. So this, <laughs> this proved to be a dead end. Right, right. Yeah, this is definitely the kind of problem where, you know, once you get this one observation... You know it's right. Yeah, you know where you're going. Uh, but if not, you can spend a lot of time in, in all these different rabbit holes. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um, um, yeah, I'm curious to see what uh, what Cordy is doing. I know yeah. we're looking at... Cordy has been working on the easy for a while. So Cordy hasn't submitted anything yet. Huh? Yeah, and he's still had only the 250 open. It looks um, like he is passing a large sample, though. So maybe he's getting ready to submit soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we might have just caught him in the act. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's pretty rare. But we'll see. He is passing. Yeah. Yeah, looks that like all he's looks fine. All yeah, I think he's about to ship it. Yeah. And so for Cordy now, I kind of imagine the hard 1,000 problem. is probably the way to go. Because um, he's behind on time already. Mm. Uh, I'm, I, I mean, you can't really expect to be getting these 500 times. I mean, the yeah, thing is, like, so. if he's just aiming for top three, maybe he just opens the 500 because, like, uh -huh. nobody has solved the 1,000, so there's, like, no evidence that it is solvable within half an hour. Um, so if he does right. want to go for good points, maybe he does just go for the 500. We'll see if he, what he chooses after. Right, so a little bit more than 30 minutes left in the coding phase. Um, Submission, yeah. Yeah, Cordy, Cordy came in. Um, looks like Eric Doe, Case Sun, uh, AC Russian Petter, and Taurus, all, all looking at the 1,000. Yeah, um, not many people are opening the medium so far, so... Yeah, Aiden Umnik on 500. Maybe and you can check on Aiden and see his Yeah, let's see what Aiden's up to. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think for what it's worth, I mean, from the two people who haven't opened the 250, Umnik and Erikto, 
I think the submission score is like a pretty good time not to work on the 250. Yeah, I, um, I don't think they will spend time on it. It just doesn't look like it's worth the, the trade off. Um, yeah, we can yeah. switch to Igor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, should we see what Kaysen's saying? Maybe he's opened the 1000 for a while. Okay. He is looking at the standing and just seeing if there's any other <laughs> progress on other phones. He does have Getting quite a bit of challenge phase already. Get me soft. Get me soft. <laughs> oh, should we get me soft? He's right there. Yeah, he's right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get Igor first and we'll get me soft. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll have Igor soon. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Yeah, My pleasure. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, thanks for it. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what Kaysen's doing. We have a... Uh, Somebody asking if Taurus actually completed the mar or competed the marathon. Oh, yeah. oh, so yes. people don't believe it. He, he did very well in the marathon, too, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so oh. we're here with another guest, Yegor, Hi. Uh, who was competing in the semifinal yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, curious to hear, what, what have you thought about the problems so far? Have you gotten to watch? Well, uh, we have solved easy and medium. OK. We think that medium is easier. Oh, okay. is that easy? <laughs> yes. Because like medium, you can come up with the idea pretty quickly, and you can test it quite surely with uh, like on small tests. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And the idea is not that hard to come up with. So. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah that okay. Makes sense. And whereas, like, how how are you thinking with the easy? Um, it's just that it took a while. To easy, like out. Uh, the problem is you you have like two types of solution for easy. Is you do the long like. The yeah. solution with no idea, basically, but you have a lot of to, to write code, a lot of code to write, or you try to think something and then come up with very quick to code solution. Right. And uh, right. as I see, it all comp competitors have gone with the yeah. planning. <laughs> 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 yeah. Going for the straight straight point, point, I guess. <laughs> Cool. Um, and yeah, so then uh, tell us what you've been thinking on the, the hard problem then. Well. I hadn't come up with any ideas how to do it, so... Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we were just talking about this. Yeah, actually, so. I, I think it'd be fun to, to kind of just talk through it with you and see, yeah. see okay. how, how much yeah. progress you've made. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, Luan, do you want to draw, oh, yeah. like, a basic, I guess, sample? Sure. So, like, we have... And then, uh, yeah, so we have something like this, right? And then, yeah, there are more points below. So, yeah, I guess... Um, what, what have you been thinking for your solution? Well, uh, think it's like uh, for each existing uh, worm, it's worm, it's called worm, yes. Yeah. So for each existing worm, you can like uh, you have at most uh, two cells where one cell is the beginning and one at the end where it can be extended. Usually, just one. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, it basically uh, makes uh, every solution, like, multiplies the solution by two. Because you either extend it or not. Or sometimes right. free if you can extend to... Uh, oh, not really, on the other hand. Um, okay, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so that Do was, the hard problem live. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a similar idea to what I was saying at first. Like, where, like, you know, for example, let's say the top row is all filled out, you know. Then this is like a, this is just an empty grid except you have the possibility of E coming in here, you have the possibility of coming in here. Yeah. Kind of work that. It seems like, it. Yes, yeah. but on the other it hand, it seems like a very promising route at the time. <laughs> yes, but you, you can't continue to, if uh, like E come here, you can't continue to, to oh, here. Oh, you can right. still have that. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, so you can keep going. Yeah. Uh, so it is a little bit tricky to deal with that, I guess. Yeah. So just uh, to talk through the, um, the idea one more time because I think it's, it's interesting though. But like, um, the idea is to take uh, diagonals and just say a pair of diagonals. So both of these two. This is kind of uh, one diagonal and the, the neighboring diagonal, okay. right? And the idea is that actually the only constraint on the worm uh, matrix is each, each pair, each neighboring pair, like this, this one, this one, this one, can either be the same or can be different. Okay. And no, co no two consecutive ones can be the same. 
Okay. Right, so that is that's a sufficient description of a, a worm. Yes. Oh, Omnix um, submitted to the 500. Nice. Um, next, so Omnix um, 500 came in. Both of the two that opened the 500 early have it, obviously, pretty different times from one another. Yeah, and it looks like Omnix um, just went for the 500. Like, he probably is discouraged by the 250 scores, so... Yeah, and went straight to the 1,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like very much the right call, especially, I think, with the 250. Even if he does get it fast, it's not going to be enough to, uh, yeah, to, to, to push past Taurus. Taurus. Yeah. The first part is probably, but if you can, like... Get quite a good play still with just uh, medium and easy because with medium you basically need to come up with that idea at some time. After you come up with idea, coding increase like five yeah, minutes sure. max. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, let's take a look at some of our contestants. I'm curious what Eric Toe is up to. Uh, that's what we're looking at there. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. Okay, so he's still coding the heart. Yeah, I. I don't think he will switch over at any point. He'll probably uh -huh. want to finish this. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. I wonder if, uh, as time gets slower and lower, we're going to see people switching to the medium and just trying to see if they can solve it quickly, like Taurus did. Yeah. Obviously, Taurus solving a pump fast doesn't mean that you can too. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Somebody commented earlier and said it's like Usain Bolt competing in a marathon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and winning. <laughs> I love that also, uh, just looking at Eric's code a little bit, he has he has debug lines and everything, he has that hashtag warning, think about it. Hashtag uh, warning. <laughs> so just kind of leaving himself little thing in, links in the code, I wonder if he's debug debugging some of the same cases that we talked about earlier. Yeah, so yeah. there are a lot of tricky cases yeah. for this problem that aren't covered in the samples. Right. The other thing I think I, I forgot to mention is that along a single diagonal, um, all the, the worms must be different there. The square, the square, the square. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Um, so but that, really, let's think about uh, worm as like, it doesn't matter uh, actually what is worm is, it just matters which cells are connected, which cells are the same worm, which, exactly. which uh, neighboring cells are the same worm. We have right. a solve of the thousand. So, oh, wow. So, oh, Peter's. Yeah, Peter's so let's 1, take 000. a look at Peter's screen actually. Sure. Um, so I actually think that now that when you think it like that, it's this this uh, problem is actually quite seems quite easy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's a couple like messy <laughs> cases with the fact that you have yeah. a prefix. Um, that you have what? The, there's some messy cases with with uh, the prefix that you're given. Yeah. So mm. we actually wrote <laughs> some of them over here. So like, let's imagine like <laughs> we didn't have taking a look at uh, some of these. Right. So you have a at the, as the last character. Ah. So you ah. have to fill it in. Okay. Yeah. And then. Um, <laughs> Also, if you don't have any A's here, you have to like pull but, it. But uh, you, yes, but yeah. you basically just like. So you, you do it before before going to your main solution, so you just connect everything and. Right, yeah, then you, it I think you works. can only connect it one way. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you only connect it to the <laughs> left mosaic. Or the, yeah, left, the like right mosaic to the left mosaic. The right mosaic, yes. Um, there is also the case where there's no A's in the top row. Like you have to subtract out. Like you don't want to actually connect the A. Um, like if you do each diagonal independently, then you yes. might actually connect uh, like up. You might actually connect the A to a different letter. That's not the same. Oh, yes. So you do have to subtract <laughs> out those configurations. So um, I want to get you guys thoughts uh, if we just take a look at Peter's code. Um, so I wonder if he did catch this yeah, case. I'm so curious if, if you guys can tell, did, did he get the bug? So I know, <laughs> I mean, he submitted and he must have passed the samples. Um, so he did write a brute force, I feel. So maybe his small cases will catch this case in particular. Um, uh -huh. It looks like he did write brute force though, but I'm not too sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell, <laughs> I guess. I mean, you only see a portion of his code, so. Uh -huh. It's not everything. For sure. So if you're if you're Peter here, what would you guys do? You know, does it make sense to just test away at the five, one thousand? Well, there is twenty three minutes, and he he had seen the tourist submitted. Oh, and uh, Kason actually submits hundred. one thousand also. Oh Kaysen, wow. Yeah, okay, Kason. Yeah, let's see what Kevin is is, is doing then. Um. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he does. He did see the medium is solvable quickly. Maybe he will open it just uh, at some point. I mean, it, it really depends on how quickly you can write uh, brute force right, yeah. right. and stress test. Right. 
Makes sense. Um, so Kevin looks like just writing a couple quick tests. He's writing empty, empty array for just one character. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so just t testing that the small cases work, uh, which you know can sometimes get you. I think um, Kevin is in an interesting spot. So he has 530 um, on the hard. He opened the easy very early and then kind of just moved on. Um, so it looks like if he wants to move up, it's the medium is, is the path forward for him after he kind of stress tests his 1000. Yeah. Yeah, actually, at this point, almost all the contestants have opened the 1,000. Um, I know Torres... Oh, Peter does open the 500 at this point also. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's that's a, a kind of a sign of confidence from him. Yes. Um, yeah. So Torres, Umnek, AC Rush, Aid, and Eric Toe all looking at the 1,000. Um, Cordy looks to be the, the lone 500 here uh, in addition to uh, two Peter. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool, interesting stuff. Okay, yeah. now the question is, will Peter come up with idea quickly or will yeah. he stealth some because... Hmm. Yeah. yeah, so it's possible he could solve all of them at this point. Because it did take Torres less than 20 minutes to solve this problem. Kevin just opened the 500 as well, so... Well, when you don't remember triangle inequality... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah it's a little right. worrying, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> cool. So yeah. So case on it looks like has fully just given up on the easy and moved on. I think that's uh, that's think a good right play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think that even if he gets the easy at this point, it's even if he not figures out, I don't think that it gets him anywhere. Um, so yeah. So, so but, but based on how it goes, it seems like the goal strategy was to skip easy altogether at yeah. the start of the contest. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I think uh, the easy <laughs> <laughs> was so <laughs> easy to be one of the hardest. I, I mean, hardest. the hardest is mm -hmm. harder, but it's much. It had much more points associated with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Looks like right. Eric is still working on the thousand, even though he opened it at the beginning. Maybe we can see his progress. Um, it looks like he's scaling some of his own test cases. I think. Um, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. He he wrote his own stress test, and then it looks like some of them failed when he ran it. Um, cool. cool. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you, you know, Taurus with a really fast submission on the 500, obviously, Peter with a good submission on the 1000, um, and it, it's looking like it's going to come down to whether, like, who will be able to save, solve the other's problem, essentially. Um, I, have, I have my face in Peter, and I have my face in Tourist as well, so <laughs> yeah. I think, I think uh, it would come down solved? to how much points they would get on each other's problems. Hmm. Uh -huh. Do you think we'll see anything interesting in challenge phase? Well, <laughs> I don't see any of this problem. Maybe hard is challengeable. I don't see how 500 or 2050 is challengeable. I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, both the easy and the medium, I think we were saying before, good sample test data as well. So, so yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at AC Rush, actually, and see what he's up to. AC Rush, I think, also one of the, the favorites coming in. Yeah, he um, does have potential to move up a lot in the hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like he does have some code down, but uh, it's hard to tell if it's correct from here also. I have a comment here that Igor is betting safe when he said I think so. <laughs> 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 yeah, you should choose. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, should we... Uh, or yeah, we have 20 minutes left. I'm curious to see what uh, what Omnic is, is looking into as well. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, so Piotr and Torres are the two favorites. I think uh, if someone else does come in with a 1,000 submission, you know, maybe that gives them enough time to, to swoop in with the 500. Yeah. But it will be tough. So Omnic's still reading the 1,000, so not That's much quite like yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it is possible to code the 1,000 relatively quickly, so you don't actually need that much time. So, like, yeah. not having any code is not necessarily a bad sign. Right, um, it just means he's still thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And can I just still have medium open test? Yep. He has medium. Or, uh, yeah. yeah, so it looks like he's... Gennady, I think, is just getting started with coding the hard. Yeah, he's coding so far. Uh-huh. Um, yep. Cool. So, yeah, 18 minutes left in, challenge, uh, in coding phase. Um, some potential to see some last minute submits. I don't know. I think especially Eric though had something where oh, you know he's, he's kind of the medium, tweaking. So uh -huh. yeah. Do you think that maybe he just kind of had the wrong solution idea? 
Yeah, maybe he was doing something row by row and then didn't work or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure why he would give up so late. But maybe he looked at the points for the other 500s and saw it was a little bit optimistic, so right. uh, maybe he installed it fast. He right. just wants to see, like, he left himself 20 minutes, kind of, maybe, to switch over. Uh -huh. So from Ercha's point of view, like, what's the, what's the strategy then? Is it to, you know, to solve the 500 and then maybe hope that the 1000s are wrong? Or? Yeah, I mean, maybe if he's worked on it for a while, he knows some tricky cases, but um, given that the one th the one thousand isn't worth as much for him anymore. It's maybe not worth the time. When we discussed strategy with Peter before the round, uh, like uh, we decided that his strategy would be like that he will solve easy, yeah. then move on to hard, and then he, when he decides that hard is unsolvable, if yeah. he decides so, <laughs> he would move on to medium. Right. Mm -hmm. Will abandon hard. So I think Richter just decided that it's solvable for him, so it's but to cut losses and do yeah. medium and easy. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. And yeah. we had Mike uh, here earlier, he was saying that Erecto was, was telling everyone um, <laughs> he would open the hard, and then after 20 minutes, if he still had no idea, then he would just quit. Which right. is interesting, because I mean, at this point, he spent almost an hour before exactly. switching. Yeah. yeah, I think um, he saw. He probably saw that it was just like five more minutes, and I will come up with solution. <laughs> yeah, five more minutes. Five more some, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is sometimes. It right. does happen. Yeah, yeah, it does happen. Yeah, I think we're gonna bring uh, me like off in. Just opened. Yeah. It looks like Amnik gave up on the 1000 and just opened the 250. So maybe he's looking for okay. a fast solve because that could move him up by not that much actually. So yeah, I mean he's he's gonna hold the place, but he was you the know, same the same challenge place. Phase, challenge phase could make it. Yeah. So. Maybe even he's just looking to, to see if there's perspective challenges. Yeah. Um, I guess he's just reading it. Oh, sorry. But, like, his strategy should just be for 1,000 if he wants to go into the top three at this point. Mm -hmm. Unless he's hoping for a fail on the other cases, so trying to solidify his place as fourth right now. Um, you want to yeah, bring these off in? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming by. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you for <laughs> Cool. So, so next we're actually going to bring in Misa, uh, yes. who's uh, the writer of several problems here, including <laughs> the worms problem. Yeah. <laughs> hello. Yeah, so hello. Hey, everybody. Um, hello, everyone back home. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think the, the main thing that we've been talking about recently is just the worms problem. Um, oh, yeah. You know, pretty cool idea, I think, with the diagonals and with all the things there. I'm curious how you got that idea or if there were similar ideas in uh, other problems. Uh, I I think as, as far as programming contests go, this is original. Uh -huh. So uh, these arise uh, the way many of these program contests problems do, by me playing around with stuff. <laughs> so at some point, uh, half a year ago, I discovered that when I'm trying this, drawing these worms, then it's actually independent by diagonals. I thought, that, well, this is quite pretty. I have, yeah. to, I have to use it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it looks like Cordy submitted the 500. Wow, actually. so Cordy with the fast 500. So he moves up to fifth or to fourth place right now. Mm. Um, do you think he'll have enough time for the 1000 if he opens it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, It'll if, if you figure tight. it out immediately, right? Pro then... Probably not. Like, uh, yeah. we were, uh, there was some kind of a trade off uh, when, we, when we were designing the final state of the 1000 because it mm. can be done more difficult, it can be less difficult. So, for example, if, if we were to set the problem with just the empty rectangle, it right. would probably be uh, much easier because... It, yeah, because you could just find it. Yeah. I think it's just the product of a bunch of Fibonacci. Yeah, that's, that's precisely it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, K. Jane actually asks for you, Mesa, uh, can you talk about how you set problems? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. And uh, for me, it's uh, uh, part, of, part of the setting the problems is what I call like a a problem setter's mindset. So uh, when I go around my day-to-day -day life, uh, I always have this small part of the brain sitting in the back and <laughs> thinking about everything I see. Hey, this, this, listen up, listen, this would make a good competition problem um, yeah. one day. And uh, I, I have a, like, a, a, you could call it dream journal. So whenever I encounter anything, anything interesting and I don't have the time to work on it right then, then I immediately write it down. Uh, well, because I'm getting old and my memory isn't what it used to be, so <laughs> I cannot rely anymore on this thing, on, on like, how I will remember this, I, I won't, so uh -huh. what it, what's not written down gets lost. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> How would you say things are things are going uh, with the contest so far? You know, is this about as many people as you expected to solve the problems? Or? Uh, yes, it, it, roughly what we expected. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a bit disappointed with the easy problem because it looks like uh, everybody who's it solved was not it. So easy, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not about the difficulty. It's about the part where uh, everybody who solved it went for the technical solution. Oh, I see. So, so they implemented the pages of code of, of combining linear functions and yeah. uh, didn't spend the extra time you know, thinking how to make it easier and right. discover these uh, properties that allow you to write a very short solution. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think if you if you do get that quickly, then it's, the code gets much shorter. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Do you, do you, uh, do you think any of the contestants here will, will manage to get all three problems? Well, we were expecting nobody probably will, but after seeing Tourist performance in semi-final one, I'm not so sure anymore. Yeah. <laughs> he, he just might. Uh -huh. Should we just look at Tourist screen and see if he's making progress on the 1000? Sure. Okay, so it looks like he has a lot of code down, and it looks like he's he is looping through diagonals, so he does have yeah. the right idea. Um, he probably will be able to think oh, yeah. he does have around 10 minutes left. In, in terms of the worms problem, uh, if, if we get some more submissions on that, it might also make uh, for an interesting challenge phase. Oh, yeah, because we were talking about the <laughs> yeah. tricky cases. Yeah, the, 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 the case with the broken worm, where you get two separate pieces of the same worm, is, oh, yeah. uh, is the one we deliberately left out of examples. <laughs> Not a fire on the leaderboard at that point, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm, at the moment, I'm also in like spectator mode. I didn't go back and check. The, pen, the the systems that have already been made. So right. I know as much as you do. I only see the scoreboard. I want to be in the suspense. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After, afterwards, yeah. After yeah. after the challenge phase, we we will double check everything, verify that it's correct before announcing the final results. But right now, I see as much as you do, and I'm <laughs> I'm in, in the suspense. What will happen during yeah. the challenge phase? Uh -huh. So while we have Misov here, um, I owe Radwush uh, an answer on the. Um, Non-integer sample question that you dodged oh, okay. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have a small case for the easy. Like, so the question was like, come up with a small case where you need a non-integer answer for the easy. Oh, <laughs> it's a. Uh, I mean, like, I can. It's hard to do on the spot. I think, but uh, should be I, I think you need uh, at least that two or three in the tree. Yeah. And different depths in different branches. And like and the different number of children, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we can, well, 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 then, then sometimes we divide, divide by three and sometimes by two and this should already do it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because you're... Yeah, but... Well, it's, well, it's still kind of shocking to me, honestly, that the, you can make samples of the answer is not an Yeah. Like, it doesn't sound like it should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's one of, one of those uh, things. Is, one. The, is the sum of the tree still an integer? Sum of the tree? Uh, no, I think the weight could be any arbitrary integer because, like, the lines are to form, like, um, or, like, the intersection points are, like, ai times t plus yeah. bi minus wi. Yeah. So, like, t is, like, equal to wi minus bi over ai for some i. So like this is not an integer. Actually, I guess this is an integer, <laughs> right? Yeah, because AI is a, the form like one divided by a number of children. Um, yeah, so I think the total weight of the tree is an integer, but the cost to make it that is not always an integer. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Because okay. I mean, if you if you decrease something by a small number, increase by a small number. Right. Yeah. The absolute values aren't. Uh, it looks like Kason actually submitted the medium pretty wow. fast, even faster than Tours. So he's in first <laughs> place right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I mean, so more you know, more people coming in with the immediate, the quick solution on the medium. Um, Kason now at the top of the scoreboard. I mean, oh, that's so gotta. So might take it away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's first. gotta worry Piotr and Torres. I mean, one thing you know, kind of that they do have going for them is that. Kevin had the 250 open for the entire contest, right? So, yeah. you know, first of all, Maybe you have to imagine. Go back to it, but I don't, I don't think he'll go back to it. Maybe we can look yeah. at his screen and see what he's looking at now. That's his screen there. Oh, okay. Yeah. It. Let's say he's just yeah. testing the 500. Yeah, and I, yeah. And I think that's yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's the, definitely the right He spent a while in the 250. It looked like he was stuck. I know yeah. he wrote some code, but actually didn't. Uh, yeah, like, like in Kevin's place, what I would do now, implement test harnesses. Yeah. 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 So, to, so yeah. to beat up other people? Uh, no, uh, just first, to make first sure of all, to, to make sure your own. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, for, for for the medium, it's quite easy. Uh, you just like 
try brute force over all possible spanning trees, compute diameters, so you can go up to seven, eight points very easily with some unoptimized code and uh, then check against it for, for many right. cases. And right. Um, I'm, yes, I'm okay. trying to keep the leaderboard up as much as possible, just in case. <laughs> sure. uh, and so funny question, actually, uh, just for fun, just wanted to ask uh, all the eight contestants before the round, <laughs> Do you guys think that you're going to make it into the top three? Like, like how many places? Three people top? actually said yes, and those three people were Kevin, Piotr, and Torres. Um, Torres so said he would actually make it in twice. Yeah, he said he would make two of the top three places. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see if that pans out. Uh, I think, um, you know, any of these 1,000s from AC Rush, from Aid, from Umnik, uh, if they come in, yeah. that's, that's big for them. and brings them all the way up. Um, um, yeah, at this point, I think... The hearts are a little bit uncertain on whether they're not they're correct or not, so we could still right. see the leaderboard change a bit. Yeah, Omnic is coding uh, the easy right now, so it's interesting he's choosing that. I guess he wants to get above forty in this sense. I'm, I'm not completely sure on how strong the examples in the five hundred are, but Monsoon, who is the writer, was he, he himself was saying that he's not sure whether all of the five hundreds will pass, even though they pass examples. So it's it may be possible that some of some, ah. some non-obvious cases are missing. Uh, uh, one, one, one place where I'm, I'm not sure whether we have cov it covered in this by the samples is that if you like brute force the all possibilities for the for the middle edge of the spanning tree, then uh, you can try just greedily connecting each of the other points to the closer of the O2 endpoints. Oh, and, right. and this so. doesn't have to be optimal. And if the test cases doesn't don't catch this, then the examples, then, then this might be also a situation where some of the mediums will fail. Right, yeah, if they mm -hmm. try to I see. Yeah, I mean, so what it's worth, Piotr on the medium, so far, no code progress. Uh, he just has something really basic to find all the distances. Um, yeah. yeah. It is looking like he maybe has the right idea. I mean, I see him doing two nested loops and he's trying the, the two, yeah. two point. And he's making like yeah. a did, did item. You, did there. you catch the moment when tourist implemented Flood Varshaw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were looking at that yeah, too. Like, yeah. uh, the so chat was the chat was board. commenting on that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then he went back and I did those questions about uh, what am I doing? That <laughs> 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 was nice. Also, also the local spectators yeah. enjoyed this bit. <laughs> yeah. We're back on Taurus here. Yeah, Taurus yeah. always with a unique blue editor. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so hard, I think, is, is the kind of problem that's, you know, maybe a little bit more code than the medium. It seems like the medium, as soon as you get started coding the idea, you should yeah. be finished pretty soon. Um, I wonder if Tourist, uh, I think I saw him testing a couple of cases and it, it, he was not getting the right answers on the samples. So if there's just a small bug or maybe if he has a big error. Yeah, the, the hard um, still issue. isn't so bad. I mean, the reference solution I wrote, I think maybe 50 lines of code or something like that. Only. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Because you just compute the Fibonacci numbers for the empty diagonals and then you need to handle like two or three cases with the, with the ones that Oh, sure, sure, sure. And you just pass them out. Yeah, the same yeah thing. you just pass the same thing. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so actually in this case, all three problems today are pretty pretty short reference, reference solutions, but maybe not, not the same for the, yeah. the contestant solutions. <laughs> yeah, Eric too was in a, in a high, heavy debug mode when I last saw his screen. Yeah. <laughs> and was like desperately trying some plus minus ones to make the examples. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can look at Eric though. He still hasn't submitted anything, so I wonder what he's working on now. I would guess maybe the medium, but... Oh no, it looks he's like back he's back in the heart, yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe he has made a... He has made the most progress on this problem. Kason testing a thousand. Oh, Kason's testing. Well, let's look at Kason. Maybe he will catch a tricky case. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like she's just testing more. Maybe we'll see if he tests like one of the, yeah, one of the, the more tricky the, ones. The, the, the edge cases one. that you guys were talking about. Yeah. Yes. When I previously was looking at his screen during his first round of testing after he submitted, then he didn't test that particular case. <laughs> but it may be that he has it already in his code. I haven't seen that one. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so less than four minutes left. Yeah, and I wonder too if we're gonna. I mean, if we're gonna see some last-minute submissions, right? Yeah, we might see some in the last three minutes. Maybe we can just cycle through everybody's screen just sure. to see if like yeah. anybody's close. I noticed Cordy actually just opened the one thousand with four minutes to go. I can't <laughs> expect that he imagines to solve or imagine that he expects to solve it. Oh, but he just wants to read it maybe before. he wants to. Yeah, that's Cordy's. Cordy's screens up there. He may still spend some time. Oh, 
I'm gonna actually submit it to 250. So I'm gonna click the fast 250. Um, and that's much faster than anybody else. Yeah, and he moves <laughs> up to fourth. So on next screen. What I, what I would expect is maybe one or two submissions on the medium where you just during the last five minutes you make an educated guess, you implement it, and uh, you hope that it passes. But yeah, and for some of those it actually could be right yeah. the, with this particular yeah. problem. Looks um, like Easy Rush is the only one who hasn't opened the medium. Everybody else has everything has open. Has all the problems open. One yeah. thing I want to mention actually is that Cordy had to resubmit his 500. Um, oh, he did. So yes. maybe that kind of speaks to what you guys are saying. Bob. Maybe he did try to greet Potential ideas that don't. Then, yeah. So he might have a good challenge case. Yeah. We'll see if it does come into play during challenge phase. Uh -huh. Is AC Rush? So AC Rush is working on worms still. Um, it looks like he's pretty, or he's just debugging right now. Can you take a look at Umnix 250? Uh, whether he came up with a, with a solution that's easy to implement. <laughs> I don't know if you can see their code from here, but you only see what they have open. Yeah, but this is just their model. Maybe he's just done. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, he's I just think taking he's a break. He's sitting tight, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, let's take a look at uh, Piotr, actually. I yeah, think Piotr, you know, he had something started on the 500. I don't know how far that is going. Yeah, he has a lot more code now. Um, it looks like he is sorting things, so that looks good, I guess. Yeah, two minutes left, um, so really, really, really crunch time. Yeah, it looks like he's getting wrong answer on the samples right now. Um, uh -huh. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. I think he could still finish. Maybe there's like a really small bug that he just needs to fix. Um, but yeah, we are getting down, uh, down to the last minute, so <laughs> not that much. <laughs> yeah. Check out Taurus. I wonder too if AC Rush would just open the 500, you know, to give himself a chance to, to read it and see if it's an easy challenge. Well, right. you, yeah. you should have enough time to do so during the intermission. Do you, uh, do you get to open a problem if you haven't? Isn't it in contest? I, I'm not, I wasn't sure about I that. I think so, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. You can look at I mean, it makes sense, like, you should be able to. Uh -huh. Yeah. We can look at Kason, maybe. Uh, Kason and see, like, if he's doing any, what do you think? Yeah, he's I wonder what he's doing. Uh, so it looks like he's still testing his thousand. Um, uh -huh. Passes the samples, right? Okay, I mean, yeah, the samples yeah. don't have the tricky case, though. <laughs> <laughs> The, the last sample on the 1000 does have one of the tricky cases and we included it after the rounds of testing to make the problem a bit more easier, a bit more approachable. Ah. So, <laughs> so, oh, so let's so see Piotr actually medium. just got his, his uh, okay. Okay, wait, should we check his screen and see what he's Yeah, let's see. Right so 30 seconds to go, I mean... Yeah, so um, yeah, he did actually finish debugging his code. I have to yes. imagine that a lot of the other <laughs> contestants are thinking, hey, this guy, yeah. you know, submit with 30 seconds to go. Challenge yeah. fodder. What are, what are the, yeah. <laughs> what hey, are he the did get challenged last round, somebody. right? So it's not impossible. <laughs> yeah. That's true, yeah. <laughs> they smell the blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, it looks like coding phase is wrapping up. In wrapping up 10, 10 seconds, seconds to Maybe go. We'll get some Let's see if we see something from Taurus um, oh. on the 1,000. Three, two, one. Cool, so we're going to have five minutes uh, intermission. I think the contestants are going to be preparing cases to, uh, to potentially challenge each other. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to get to watch. Right now, Piotr on top, only person with three problems. Uh, case on not too far behind. Um, I think Nobody if Piotr... Nobody within challenge range, though. So um, <laughs> the only way to really move up is to challenge somebody directly ahead of you. We're going to have a good look of uh, Gennady here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> During the on-site finals, usually the change phase isn't so eventful. Like, uh, most of the contestants are good and yeah. they go through all the basic motions if you can easily test their solution. Mm -hmm. On many cases, do so. Right. So, usually we don't see as many, as many challenges as you would see, for example, in an online round. But now, given the flurry of the last minute submissions, yeah, I, th yeah, I think we, we might be in for a treat. <laughs> and yeah. I think, I mean, especially, I think some of the contestants are thinking that they need to make a challenge or two in order yeah. to, uh, to, to get ahead. So. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I want to say also, I think if Piotr fails his 250, I think he's still ahead of uh, Yeah, he's still ahead Kevin. of Case. Yeah, so, so. so he mostly just needs the 500 and 1,000 to pass. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, close race. It looks like uh, Piotr's still testing. Is that Piotr? I guess. 
can't tell. Um, we are on, yeah, Pitter. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw him testing his code earlier, so maybe he is. Yeah, he's okay, so now, so. now, now, as he has the division summary open, he's definitely in the mode where he's calculating what happens if there is a challenge this oh, way, right, that yeah, way. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when do I need to ch take a risk? <laughs> when can I? When I should I sit? So the, this is also a part of the game. You have to evaluate all these all these balances. How much do I have to gain if it succeeds? How much do I have to lose if I lose the yeah. twenty five points? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think you know just to talk through a couple of scenarios. So if Piotr fails the one thousand, uh, which is very possible, uh, he gets put in third place behind both Torsten and Case Sun. Um, of course, one of them could fail as well, right? Uh, if Piotr fails the five hundred, he gets put in second place, uh, and then Case Sun takes the lead. So. Yeah, I mean, lots of different scenarios. Um, you know, we're not sure which one Piotr is most confident about. Maybe he knows his 500 is good, for example, but not as sure about the 1,000. Um, that's going to influence his strategy, too. Yeah. We're looking at tourist screen. Oh, tourist screen. Oh, tourist is not at his desk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I, I like to look at is uh, what what order the contestants like to challenge in, or at least to, to look oh, through like the programs how, in. How do you sort? Uh, yeah, there's lots of different ways to sort. And <laughs> sort I, by I, rating. Honestly, I kind of want to say I've, I've seen almost every possible sort, uh, you know, yeah. decision used in, the, in, in challenging. So mm -hmm. you can sort by rating, you can sort by total score, you can sort by palm submission, and you can sort each one either by top or bottom. Yeah, and can, I want to say can, I've seen all six of them. <laughs> you can also have some like, your internal combination of weights for these criteria. <laughs> right. So usually I start from the lowest rated coders, but if there was a last minute submission, I start with that one instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I think one, one other area that's pretty interesting to look at is to just look at each competitor's profile and see all their submit history. So you'll see, see their submit success, like if they, and it's actually, it's surprisingly different between different competitors. Like some contestants will be at like, you know, 85% success rate even, whereas some will only be at like 65, 70. Um, and that's a big difference, you know, when you're thinking about who to, who to challenge. Yeah. <coughs> and there, there is kind of a, of, of, of a balance you, you should find there. If you are submitting only when you are really, really certain about your solution, you are probably use, losing some equity in, in the long run. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> as, as they say, if you never miss the plane, you are going to the airport too early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think uh, TCO in particular is maybe one of the only spots where you have to think about the reverse, where sometimes a bad submission could give somebody a challenge that jumps ahead of you, right? Usually, like, one or two places isn't going to change your life all that much. Uh, but here, you know, it could be the difference between winning and losing. Yeah. And also, it's, it's, it's like about, it's about payoff. Like, it's a, you know, it's a finals of a big contest. You only get there so many times and uh, yeah. maybe you, could, you should adapt a more risky strategy that gives you all or nothing. <laughs> right. You're right. Just maximize your chance of winning only. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it looks like challenge phase is starting around About to get underway. I so. want to see um, Kevin's screen actually as yeah, soon as we start challenging because he's the one that... That is Kevin's screen, right? Okay, great. Okay, yeah. Has, uh, has some potential moves to make. Can go up? Yeah. Challenge phase getting started right now. Oh, so he's challenging the hearts. He's going to be sure it's long challenge phase of the algorithm competition has begun. Okay. He doesn't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's checking for something very specific. Yeah. <laughs> he's just looking at Peter's submissions now, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, an interesting decision, I would say, because, I mean... If, that's if, the only person above him, right? If, so he does want to bring him down. Right, but if Piotr's code is wrong, um, then he doesn't have anything to worry about with Piotr. Oh, right, right? that's so, true. So, yeah. <clears throat> I see an unsuccessful oh. challenge from Umnik on Kaysan's 500. Um, okay. So that has to feel good for Kevin, uh, just to know that he's held up to a, a strong case. Maybe we can check on next screen. Maybe he's looking at more 500s. Yeah, I'm curious if he has a tricky case. 500 is tricky to challenge in that uh, you know even if you you know that some greedy is maybe not optimal, it's hard to, to come up with a good small case for that. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> it looks like he's going back to 250s and maybe this. Yeah, the, the cases for the 500 are still such that you can work it out on paper, you just have to spend a few minutes on it. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Who else do you want to look at? Um, let's let's check out Peter. Yeah, yeah, let's see what Peter is up to. Yeah. 
So we appear to be looking at Taurus 500. Okay. Maybe you can check out tourists. Possibly. Check out tourists? Yeah. yeah, I think... Tourist is looking at all the 500. Tourist knows that in order to win, um, Piotr and Amnik have to, or sorry, Piotr and Kaysan have to either fail their 500 or 1,000. Yep. Um, I don't know if, if any version of that is sufficient for him to come up or not, but uh, I think I think I want to say Piotr's 1,000 is uh, big enough that he really needs that to come down. Yeah. Oh, hmm. well, iPad went to sleep. That's what that is. <laughs> what else you want to check? Uh, we can look at Eric though, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure what you'll be looking at, I guess. Maybe he's looking at the one, or he's looking at 500 right now. Um, yeah, looking at Cordy's 500. I think Cordy's an interesting uh, interesting target because he has a resubmit, right? So. Yeah. Maybe we can look at Cordy also, because Cordy did resubmit, so maybe he had a case in mind. So he's still looking at 500. It looks like Omnix 500 is some sort of flow solution, so it is That's a little true. bit interesting. Yeah, so, so um, you know, one way to flip the challenges around is like, Omnix challenged um, the, the 500 and it was incorrect, so maybe that means that his, uh, his understanding of the problem is wrong. Right, right. yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> It doesn't have to be. I mean, he was implementing Geistra and some other uh, stuff that seems unnecessary. Right. But at the same time, as we are in the plane, it may be that he's still computing the correct things just in a very roundabout in a way. More, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Fair enough, yeah. Kevin's screen, where are you? So Kevin's still looking at 500s. Um, check out aid. Um, next like 250. 250. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah. And yeah. do you guys think that this is the? Uh... No, this looks like the long solution. It's uh, too long. For, right. Uh, yeah. It looks like he's keeping track of all the slopes. Uh -huh. um, for each, uh, <laughs> so he line just managed to get that cut out faster yeah, than the other. Yeah. He's just maybe much more. Uh, he's too typing this. Wow. So oh, Cordy's so 500 Cordy... actually went down. Oh, uh, yeah. Got challenged by tourist. Okay. Oh, it looks like there was an unsuccessful challenge by AC Rush 2. I didn't see who it went to. Yeah, I'm not sure who that why, was. Um, can you, why would you challenge QWERTY if they're below you? Um, you need those, those points. So okay. every, every okay. correct challenge you get, you get plus 50 points as well. Okay. Um, and so, you know, for tourists... It, it That's why people were jumping through 500s just to look for yeah, yeah, a certain exactly. thing. Okay. Yeah, and it hasn't... Uh, yeah, I mean, it hasn't moved in many spots so far, but, you know, with the system tests, obviously Got things it. could change. Yeah. And it's worth mentioning that you don't really get any cheap challenges at this stage of the competition. In, right, in yeah. The, in the early rounds, there are usually people who have horribly wrong solutions. You just, you just, you just blow them out in, and get In the state points. where you find one specific thing and, okay, this is a place where you can make a mistake. You just open a solution, five seconds. Is it there? Is it yeah. not there? In Got one it. of the semifinals, in the lily pad problem, for example, you could check, do, that, do they handle correctly the cases when the number of rows of columns is exactly one? And this is... A you can do I think right Igor was talking about yeah. that yesterday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he got in like a loop, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> On the one and one, yeah. the simplest case, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean definitely like a harder, harder group of contestants to get challenges, also a harder group of contestants to compete for, for the challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, because everyone else is looking at these programs as well. Yeah. So four more minutes to go. It's possible in the last minute or two, you know, once things are starting to stabilize, we might see people making moves because they have to. Yeah. Um, so there will be. So so they sp they're spending now this time finding for the most sketchy solution they can. But if if they are still not sure what it does, maybe yeah. like during the final seconds they will evaluate. Okay. It's, it's worth the risk to take the challenge. Mm -hmm. So right. Kaysen's actually back on Piotr's 1000. So maybe he's trying to read it more carefully and see a specific case yeah. that he's not handling. Yeah, with, with these solutions, we are at the level where we have to spend a minute or two yeah. reading, <laughs> reading through the solution, getting the big picture. What are they doing? Are they doing the cases that are similar to mine? Or is the logic completely different? And if it's completely different, then I probably give up because I don't have the time to understand yeah. what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the one problem I also want to say it's not too hard to create a, a hard random case. Yeah. Um, Rich Dale's looking at uh, Cordy's 250. <laughs> yeah. Cool. 
three minutes to go. Again, Piotr is good all, all holding up, so I mean, if this passes system test as well, then we're going to see Piotr uh, as our new TCO champion. Yeah, like, uh, if he solved all three, as in he's the only one who did so, yeah. well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what he's. Let's see what he's working on. Looking at Kevin's 500. Yeah, as I, as I was saying before, our best estimate before the round was that it's unlikely that somebody will get all three. Uh -huh. uh, when the when the round started and we saw the strategies, who opened what at the beginning, so then my first guess was that the most likely winner is Eric too with the easy and the hard. <laughs> right. <That's>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as, I mean, as we saw, it's not what happened. <laughs> right, like things kind of turned on their head in the last few minutes. Uh, yeah. You know, seeing Kevin shoot up to the top and then seeing Piotr finish all three problems even after that. So, AC Rush is looking at Kevin uh, Kaysan. Yeah. 1,000. Who else do you want to see? Uh, let's see what Omnic is up to. I haven't looked at him in a while. <laughs> yeah, he's done. There's nothing mm -hmm. going on there. Yeah, he's, uh, he's yeah. just chilling. Uh, um, Umnig also, during the semifinals, decided to walk away completely. So uh. he didn't even try to challenge anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Where else? Um, so I think Kevin and Piotr as the top two seeds are probably the, the two to look at. It looks like yeah. Kevin is looking at Piotr. I think Piotr was actually looking at Kevin's code as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tourist, 500. Okay, Piotr's looking at Tourist now. Well. And just visually, I mean, um, you know, one of the 500s got caught in this challenge uh, for being incorrect. So I have to imagine that means everyone has read through the other 500s as well. Um, yeah. At, le at least if it gives you the information that there is something where you can challenge on the 500. Yeah. Yeah, there are some cases that are not covered by the examples. All right, coming up to the last minute here. Um, Taurus currently in third place, Kaysan in second, Piotr in first. Do you guys expect right now that, uh, uh, Nisaf, you were saying that you're, you're looking at this as a spectator as well. Do you, do you guys expect that any of the, the current submissions will fail? I think so, yes. I think, okay. I think the, st the final results will be different from what we see now. Yeah. Looks like he's not doing much, huh? Yeah, it looks like he's just reading through. Um, I'm hoping that each problem will get solved at least once. That's usually the goal when we are setting these contests. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, so so far only the hard from the second semifinal, right? Is that yeah. The one problem that didn't get solved. In fact, I think the, no problem had everyone solve it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> AC Russia is minus twenty five. Yeah, so who did he challenge? Uh, uh, I we think missed we, that. we might have missed. I it. think we missed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, Nick with a negative challenge, AC Russia with a negative challenge, Taurus with the only positive challenge. Ten I guess seconds to go. Right? Yep. Yeah, on Cordy. Yeah. Looks like Kevin is done. He's uh, he's not planning to uh, to act here. Okay. okay so that's it. Okay. All right. Okay. So now it's time for suspense. Uh, we will <laughs> go backstage. We will double check that everything is tested as it should be, and then when there's final ceremony, we will announce the results for this. Yep. Okay. So thank you for having me in the studio. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks, thanks for coming. Yeah. Bye, everybody. <laughs> All right, we, do, do you want to stay on air? Do you want to talk about stuff or do you uh, want to come back? Yeah, I mean, awesome stuff. I think we're, we're going to get to see the, the final results displayed um, along with all the other TCO uh, championships uh, pretty shortly on stream. Sounds good. So, yeah. All right, awesome. we'll be right good back. Okay. Yeah, we'll be right back. Thanks, right. guys.